Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. We probably all have sung that song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And uh, it's probably the best known Christian song across the world. Even non-Christians sing it. But sometimes I think we miss the uniqueness of that message. Amazing grace, God's amazing grace. So today I just want to share and take you deeper into the scriptures, into what the Bible says and into an understanding of God's grace. Because we are a people of grace. Christians, cool, Christianity is a absolutely unique from all religions. So from all other religions, do not have grace. Christianity is the only belief system that is founded on God's grace. So we need to understand what grace is. We need to plunge deeply into grace. We need to promote grace because grace is about a person. Yeah, it's about a person. It's not about a doctrine. And that person is Jesus Christ. He is the very essence and the manifestation of the sweetness of the Father's grace to us. So we're going to look today at what grace is and what it means for your life. Because when we are in grace, when we understand grace, when we are founded in the grace of Jesus Christ, I want to tell you the devil just flees. The devil hates grace. The devil loves religion. But we are called not into religion. We are called into relationship. And I'm going to explain the difference to you now. And I'm going to like take you deep into grace. You know, I was saved almost 30 years ago. For 30 years I've been in the mission field. I've been preaching and teaching and ministering all over the world. I've seen the dead raised, the sick killed, thousands upon thousands saved. And, and I really, really appreciate that. I really appreciate being part of it. I'm humbled by it. But I know at the end of the day, it's all about God's amazing grace. But I want to say to you, it took me years to come to an understanding of grace. What I realized is I was bound up by religion and laws and rules and regulations. And about 10 years ago, God take, started taking me on a journey into grace, the grace of Jesus Christ and the righteousness that is by faith, God's free gift to us. So I want to share that with you today. So to say and to reiterate, Christianity is unique in that we are a people under God's grace. And because, so, so Ephesians are 2, two 4 to 10, you can read that. It's going to be one of our, our base scripture for today. And I'm not, going to, I'm not going to quote all these scriptures. I'm just going to speak them out and um, they'll come up on the screen. So I encourage you, one of the reasons I'm doing these teachings is because I want to help found, especially new believers, and equip new believers in biblical truth. You see, as I keep on saying, people's opinions don't matter. What matters is God's opinion. And God's opinion and God's ways are expressed in the Bible. We need to be biblically sound and founded in biblical truth, in the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to enjoy what God has revealed in the scriptures, especially in the new covenant. Remember, we are new covenant, New Testament people. And the new covenant is all about a progressive revelation of God's grace. It actually started in the old, but it's fulfilled in the new. And uh, that's another story. I'll share it to, with you some other time because it's going to be a part of like a little part of a series on grace. But the beautiful thing about grace with all other religions, with, with um, Islam, with Buddhism, Hinduism, there is no assurance of salvation. People never know if they saved. They hope they're saved. They, they, they hope one day when they appear before their God that, that they're going to be saved and God's going to forgive them. But there's no assurance of that. Christianity, because of grace, because salvation is by grace through faith and not by your works, you have assurance. You are assured of eternal life if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you've never done that, I encourage you, to get down on your knees, to cry out to God and invite Jesus in today. And if you need help in that, contact me. But God's salvation is free. It's for all who would believe in Jesus Christ. So it says all who would believe in Jesus, believe in what he's done on the cross in dying for our sins, have the right to become children of God. God extends his grace to everyone. Grace is available 
to all. For God will have that none perish. You see, our eternal life and our abundant life now is given to us by the grace of God and guaranteed by the blood of Jesus Christ shed on the cross and the Spirit. <laughs> the Spirit of life, the abundant life of Jesus earned on the cross. By grace, our sins are forgiven. That's amazing. God, God freely forgives our sins. And not only does he say forgives them, it actually says he forgets them and no longer accounted to us. That's amazing grace. So I just want to just say that there's two systems. There's grace and there's religion. Grace means you depend on God and God's goodness. Religion means you depend on your own effort and works. And as we know, we are not saved by our works. We are saved by grace through faith and not by works so no man can boast. Yes, we are called to do good works, but those come from knowing that we're saved. They, they don't get us anything in the kingdom of God. So religion is about works and rituals. It's about trying to get right with God through works and rituals. Grace is about depending on the finished work of the cross, that Jesus did it all on the cross. Grace is about relationship. Religion is about works. Now, sadly, you can be a Christian and you can be in religion. A lot of traditional Christians are in religion. I used to be in religion. I used to think I had to work for my salvation. I had to work to get right with God. But then God took me deep into grace and actually said to me, Gary, you're self-righteous <laughs> and you're a legalist <laughs> and you think I owe you something. I owe you nothing. <laughs> I owe you nothing, says the Lord, but I give you everything in Jesus. That's, that's the beautiful gift of grace. So what is grace? Grace is God's gift of salvation earned for us by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, on the cross. So grace, amazing, and it's sweet. And I want to tell you something, it's offensive to the religious spirit. A lot of religious people don't like grace. In fact, a lot of people don't even like people preaching about grace. For some reason, it offends them. But grace is God's free gift to us. You see, grace is dependent on God's goodness. That we have a good, kind and loving Father that just pours out blessings upon us. Grace is unearned, undeserved acceptance by a holy God of an unholy people. You know, even while we were sinners, He died, Jesus died for us. So that we should become the righteousness of Christ in God. Or oh, God's righteousness, right standing with God. See, grace is about a good father. Grace, Jesus came to reveal the father, came to show the grace of the father. Yes, God is judge, but he's also more than judge. He's Abba, father. And grace reveals that. <laughs> Such good news that God's not just a stern, or he's not a stern Victorian father out to punish us and get us and teach us lessons. He's Abba. And the word Abba is a Jewish word for daddy. So in Romans 8, it says, it says we have not been given a spirit that makes us a slave to fear, but the spirit of adoption by which we call him Abba. See, we don't, we don't sit there quaking and in fear of God. And let me just say there's a righteous fear of God, a righteous respect and awe. But we don't sit there like, I don't want to go near God. Because I'm so afraid of him, it's no, he's Abba. I run into his arms like a little child. That's grace. Grace is when you become a child. So the difference between grace and mercy. Mercy is when our sins are forgiven. But grace is a step beyond that. So in the Old Testament, it revealed, it revealed primarily God's mercy. But the New Testament reveals God's grace. I'll give you a little story just to explain the difference. So for instance, if you take there was a judge... And he had a son. And the son was murdered by another young man. And one day that young man, that murderer, appears before the judge, the judge on being guilty of murdering the judge's son. Mercy would be that the judge says to the young man, I forgive you, I am going to pay in your place. And I let you go free. I know this is a hypothetical story, but it's, it's a picture of mercy. The judge's mercy. You deserve to die, 
but I'm going to let you go free. I'm going to show you mercy. But grace is the next step where that judge whose son was murdered by the murderer turns around and says to the young man who murdered his son, not only am I going to forgive you, but I'm going to adopt you as my child and take you into my home. That's grace. And you are going to have all the benefits that my son used to have. And it's the same. Jesus died. The Son of God died on the cross so that we should become children of God. Ooh. <laughs> wow, that's amazing grace. That is the extent of God's grace. We deserve death because of our sins. But instead, he's taken us in, forgiven us. That's mercy. But in grace, he's adopted us. Now we can... We can draw on all our inheritance of our Father. We can raid His fridge, so to speak. <laughs> we can live in His house. We can have all the benefits of the Son who died on the cross in our place. That's amazing grace. Unmerited grace is unmerited favor, blessing, and empowerment from God as a free gift. It's not something you can earn. It's not something you or I deserve. It's God just saying, I'm a loving father and I give you these things. Enjoy them. Use them. Use them for my glory. Use them for the family glory. The families of God glory. You are now my representative. You are now my children. You are my sons and daughters upon the earth. So grace is amazing. Grace is, all, is actually too good to be true. And that's why it offends people. You know, in grace you get what you haven't earned. You reap what you haven't sown. <laughs> and those are natural laws which are true. But grace supersedes all those things. Grace is a supernatural gift of God. Where we reap what we haven't sown. Where we get what we don't deserve. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, it's actually offensive. Because people want the wages of their actions. But God says, no, I, I give to you freely. You know, the parable of the workers. Some came... Beginning of the day, some came at the end of the day. But they all got the same rewards, all got the same earnings. That's a picture of grace. The prodigal son, Luke 15, is a picture of grace. The story of the adulterous woman in John 8 is a picture of grace. You know, all, all those people deserved less than what they got. But God in his generosity and kindness and goodness poured out grace upon them. Grace, actually, in the Christian sense, is not a doctrine. You see, we shouldn't go around preaching the doctrine of grace. We go around preaching Jesus Christ, the person of grace. Grace is a personified, personified being, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. He is perfect grace, as he's perfect theology as well. If you want to know what God's like, look at Jesus, full of grace. Jesus forgave, Jesus encouraged, Jesus empowered. In fact, the only people Jesus ever condemned were the religious, the Pharisees, the legalists. So grace and truth are linked. So it says the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So if you want to understand the truth, if you want to understand the scriptures, you have to understand grace. You have to have that revelation of grace because grace and truth came through Jesus. And the word uh, grace, the Greek word is charis. And in the Old Testament, it is chen. The Hebrew word is chen. The um, Greek word in the New Testament is charis. And, it, that, and, it, and, it, and the Tyler's definition in Greek is this. Listen to this. It's that which affords joy, pleasure, delight, sweetness, charm, Oh, <laughs> loveliness, favor, loving kindness. Look at, listen to that. It's, it's fantastic. And yet it says that God saves us through grace. It's in, in, in Romans, it says that we are not under the law. We are under grace. You see, we are under that which affords joy, pleasure, delight, sweetness, charm, loveliness, favor, loving kindness, blessing upon blessing. John 1, 16, from the fullness of grace, the fullness of his grace, Jesus' grace, comes blessing upon blessing, favor upon favor, and gift upon gift. Guys, this is the gospel. 
It may offend some people, but it's still the gospel. You see, we are saved. Not only are we saved by grace, but we are maintained in our right standing with God by his grace alone. He reaches out to us. We are saved because he revealed his love to us. And we maintain our right relationship, intimacy with God, intimacy with the Father, intimacy through the Holy Spirit by grace alone. God's free gift. Grace is new every day. And when we're weak, his grace is sufficient for us. See, I used to think that I was saved by grace. I could accept that. But I used to think I have to maintain my relationship with God through my good works. Let me just say something. We are, we are chosen by grace and not by works. Romans 11, 5. You see, we, we Christian, many traditional Christians and very religious Christians think that it's all about obedience and it's all about works. It's not. Obedience and good works are the fruit of grace and righteousness. Let me say that again. Obedience and good works are the fruit of righteousness and grace. They are not the root of it. In other words, you... We're not saved and we're not in, under God's favor because we do good works or because we obey. We obey and we do good works because God has poured out his love to us and poured out his grace to us. So grace and righteousness and they've intertwined our right standing with God produces the fruit of good works, obedience, kindness, love and all those things. They are the fruit, not the root. Righteousness, our right standing with God, our justification, just as if we never sinned, is also linked to grace. Okay, we are not under the law, but under grace. And Romans 6, 14 to 18 says we are, we are slaves to righteousness. In other words, when you're in grace, you actually are a slave to righteousness. You cannot help being, but being in right relationship with God. And because you're in right relationship with God, you live right. You live holy. You live sinless lives. <laughs> and when sin does, does take hold of you from time to time, grace even increases and abounds. Oh, that's good news. <laughs> it's a different way of seeing things, a different way of, leaving, of living. Grace blesses us. God, you know, God wants to prosper us. He's a good, kind and loving Father. And again... People take offense at, at, at God saying he wants to prosper us. But he wants to prosper us. He said, may go well with you and may your soul prosper. See, God, if, you, if you're a father, you know you want to see your children prosper. It's not a name it and claim it kind of prosperity, but it's like living in, in God's goodness, living in God's relationship, being intimate, having experiences with God, understanding the word of God. Moving in the power of the Holy Spirit. These are just blessings upon blessings. So we, it's, it's stuff we haven't earned. It's stuff we don't deserve. It's God's unmerited and undeserved favor from a loving, loving, kind, good Father. <laughs> We're His children. We're beloved. Jesus died that we should become children of God. See, the focus of grace, the difference between religion, religion focuses on us and what we should do for God. Grace focuses on Jesus and what he has done for us. And that offends people because they're like, well, well, well you know, what have we got to do? Well, you know what? When you are born again and saved, you can't help but do the things of God. Your, your whole nature is to please the Father. To do what is right in his eyes. It's amazing. It's good news. It's life changing news. So people, I, I, I just encourage you, share this news. If you like it, this is just a part of a series. I encourage you to listen to the uh, um, other teaching on, on the good news gospel. Have you mixed grace with another gospel? Are you mixing law and grace? Listen to that teaching. And I'm going to do some other teachings on grace and righteousness. God's free gift. God is good. God is kind. God is loving. God loves you. You are special in his eyes. If you like this video, subscribe, turn on the notification button so you get notices when I post more videos. And guess what? Share it. Share the good news of Jesus Christ and his grace with the world. People are desperate for this message. <laughs> it is a very empowerment to overcome the lusts and the sins of the world is God's grace. 
God's grace overcomes. God's grace, God's empowerment. It's good news and it's all about Jesus and his work on the cross. Love to you, grace to you. And even now I pray Holy Spirit, I pray touch each person as I, as, <laughs> as I share now. May the joy of the Lord be their strength. Holy Spirit, just pour out upon them now the grace, revelation. Spirit of revelation, bring the revelation of Jesus' grace. Bring the revelation of the Father's love. <laughs> and for anyone who's not saved, touch their hearts now, I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Bless you and I love you.